one last definition from this box, and then we'll move on to the example, which is sometimes, um, particularly when we're talking about people like age demographics, um, they will often have open-ended tables. Namely, the first class has no lower limit and the um, last class has no upper limit. For example, sometimes they'll say ages of voters and then they'll get to you know 70 and up and they'll just write at the bottom 70 and higher and leave it at that because it's just too hard to keep track when there's so few people in that age group or something like that. Okay, so example three. The following frequency distribution shows the grades on the final exam of a sample of 50 statistics students. I'll be honest, I actually made this data set up, but so <laughs> bear with me. Okay, so the first thing it wants us to do is fill in the rest of the distribution. So let's see a couple things. Well, we see a pattern here, 35 to 44.9, 45 to 54.9, 55 to 64.9. To, to be honest with you, I didn't have to put the point nine in there. I could have left it as like that. And that would have worked as well, okay? Because it's not like you can score, you know, point nine on a test. Well, not often. So if we're following the same pattern, this, must, this one must be 65 to 74.9. That way it fits right underneath the 75 and right after the 64.9. All right, so we're done with those things. Now we're going to have to figure out the frequencies. Well, we can kind of tell what this frequency is going to be because the relative frequency is 2 divided by the total, and the total was 50. So this one must be 2, right? And then all we need to do is figure out what all of these are and this one and then take away 50 or take it away from 50, excuse me. So I'm going to actually, I'm going to make a new sheet right here. And I guess I'll call it um, stats exam grades or something like that. No, you don't, you know, have to do it, but I think we need it for later on anyway. And I figure I might as well. So I'll copy and paste. And of course, when I copy and paste, I'm, I'm getting away with the fact that I have this file electronically. If you don't have um, the Microsoft Word version of this or whatever, you can always just type it in. It's not that bad. Okay, so for this little cell right here, I need to know what the sum of all of these other ones were, just for my own benefit. Okay, so all the other ones added up to 39. So this one must be equal to that total minus 39. And so it's 11 of them in there. And you can see huh, the sum value now makes 50, just like we expected it to. As a matter of fact, I'm going to rewrite this one to be that auto sum. Remember, you can type equal sum B2 to colon B8, right? B2 to B8. Or you can just click over here on the auto sum feature on the home menu, and that'll work too. It's a capital, oops, and there's a circular reference in there, so I'm just going to delete that. So let me show you what's happening here, just so you can see, because everybody makes mistakes. So it's saying sum this from B2 to B8, but this little guy right here says take that sum, B9, which is including me, B7, and take away 39. In other words, this it's referring back to itself. So that's no good at all. So I'm just going to type 50 take away 39 here. There we go. And then I can get it to sum up to 50. So circular reference means that like this cell was calculated from that cell, but that cell was calculated from this cell. So it, it breaks the program. It's like you can't do that. You know, either one of them has to get figured out so that the other cell can get figured out. All right. Now, as for these, I could have typed equals 2 divided by that grand total 50. Give it dollar signs. And then I can drag it down, fill fill the column is what that's called. So I can fill the column down, and there they are. I've got all my relative frequencies. So I can copy and paste those into my Word file. I only wrote the 2 out of 50 there just so you guys could see you know, how I'm making that calculation. But you don't have to do it. Um, to be fair, the other thing is you could do that instead of decimals. But I mean, I have Excel at my disposal. Why not use decimals? But you could also just use a fraction. All right, so we'll, we won't finish all this right now, but we'll start it. State the third class. Well, the third class is 54 to 64.9. So that's the third class. State the second class's lower class limit. That's right here. This is the second class. First class, second class, third class. So the second class's lower class limit is 45. The sixth class's upper class limit will have to wait till the next video. See you then.